my name is Brian Cross. Everyone in music knows me as Froggy. Um, just uh, finished up a tour with Tamar Braxton and John Legend. Um, prior to that, and, and still currently, uh, all the female pop girls, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, uh, the Pussycat Dolls, Nicole Scherzinger from the Pussycat Dolls. I'm currently at Center Staging today, doing a little programming, getting some stuff ready for an upcoming show with uh, Christina Aguilera, and also uh, doing some programming for uh, another band that's up and coming, a group called St. Cello's Fall, getting their in-ear monitor console uh, set up. So I'm working with one of their sessions today and uh, building ear mixes for that. Trumpet player named Maynard Ferguson was my first tour. Um, and then I went right from Maynard Ferguson's band to uh, you know, the soul group Tower of Power. I was with those guys for years. And uh, it's actually where I got the nickname Froggy from, was uh, from Rocco, the bass player. My first day uh, dealing with him, he comes out of the back lounge of the bus and he's like, man, you give me a frog vibe, I'm gonna call you Froggy. And that was it. Today we're gonna focus on um, the use of Waves plugins in monitors, where you're answering directly to the artist. You're in the hot seat back there. You know, if they don't like what's coming across their ears, chances you're, you're, you're probably not gonna be there tomorrow. As a monitor engineer, you know, I'm in the pilot seat over here. I, I'm, I'm stage left. I wanna have situational awareness here of what's going on in my world. When you're doing monitors, you have so many things going on. You know, I have 18 mixes going on stage. I'm trying to watch the singer's movement. The keyboard player needs this up, down, or that in the mix. You're, uh, you're not being able to hear the deck. You're hearing it through your wedges underneath the stage. You think something might be taking off on you a little bit frequency-wise. Let me just jump over to the HEQ. Oh, cool. You know what Waves did? They put an analyzer in the EQ. This is great. I can actually look real quick while I'm doing these 18 other things and see, oh, sure enough, there's some 500 taken off in this mix. I can be like, cool, I'm just gonna put a point at 500. And I'm just gonna duck that real quick. HEQ's allowing you to color that mix. It's not just so sterile and you're, you're, you're getting back to making it musical. And you know, putting the graphic tools in there, the, the analyzer in with it, can't say enough good stuff about that. I use uh, the Waves Paz Analyzer. I use that a lot for my mix outputs. I have it on my cue bus, so anything I cue goes there. I also, when I cue a channel, in particular a stereo channel, uh, it'll give me reference uh, phase, what's going on with it as well, as a signal. What am I sending down the line here? I, I love mixing the female voice. Um, there's just a purity and a sound um, out of that, that that you know any other instrument can't really duplicate. Um, and anything you do on the technical side becomes so exposed due to, you know, that, that voice you're working with. So it really makes you kind of hone your craft and uh, bring your A-game. You know, by using the, the right tools, it, it helps you a lot in that situation. A lot of artists will ask for more this, less this, more this, because that's just what they've been used to so long. They haven't heard that true polished sound in their ears. They they're just came to a, a realization like, oh, this is how my ears are supposed to sound. They don't have to sound that way. I can give you a polished sound in your ear mix using some of the same plugins, the same settings that you use in the studio. For instance, uh, Christina Aguilera. To create a pocket for her vocal to sit in where she can hear every little nuance of her tone and be able to you know, grab that microphone and step up there and sing with confidence knowing that you know, when she really digs into it, she's not gonna be fighting with the guitar, fighting with, you know, um, playback. She's able to, to hear what she exactly needs to hear in her ears to do her job and feel confident and, and relay that to the audience in her performance. With the plugins, I'm able to, you know, call the producer that did the album and say, hey, you know, when you had her in the studio tracking this, 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 you know, what did she like to hear in her headphones in there? You know, what was your vocal chain on her? You know, if you don't mind, could you send me the presets for that? I'd love to be able to duplicate that live for her in her ears. So when she walks up there, she has finished the album, walks on stage, cool, my vocal sounds exactly the same. Well, yeah, it does because the same plug-in chain, the same presets, and you know, the only thing really changed in the equation, you know, you went away from your, your $10,000 studio mic over to your, 
your handheld, but now with the handheld technology, you know, with, with her, we're using a Neumann 104S on there. It's as close to the studio as you can really come. The technology's there, you know, I want to be able to deliver.